What's up, y'all? My name is Agogo or Sophie, and welcome to my YouTube channel. We finally got here, so we gonna hop right into it. This channel isn't really about me, it's mainly about God. I'm really doing this for the glory of God, so I hope you guys will enjoy. I'm not gonna talk about myself too much, but we're gonna hop right into the topic of this video because I don't like long intros, so let's go. So, as you can see in the title, is Christianity a selfish religion? I wonder what you think of when you read that the first time. Me, when I read is Christianity a selfish religion, I think, what do you mean by selfish? Like, but I mean selfish as in any other way you would use the word selfish, as in something that thinks about itself or a faith where people think about themselves, where it's all about you, what you can get, etc., etc. And I know that some of you, especially Christians, would say, no, it's not a selfish religion, obviously, because God cares for all, like God cares for everybody. But do your actions match that philosophy? Do your actions match that belief? I'm gonna delve deeper into it. When you decided to give your life to Christ, why did you do it? Okay, no, in fact, not why did you did do it, but what did you think you were going to gain as a result of doing that? Was it so that you could be, you could potentially be richer, get more success, have, um, I don't know, godly husband, a godly wife? Like, what was the reason you actually did it? I'm curious because I feel like a lot of the reasons why many of us give our, our lives to Christ is because we were preached a prosperity gospel, which told us that God wants to give you blessings and this and this and this and this and this, but they never preached it in its full context, really. Yes, God wants to give you blessings, but at what cost? Yes, God wants to give you blessings, but you must deny yourself. You must die to yourself. You must die to your own desires and let him reign and live through you. Do you ever think of it like that? I feel like a lot of us, when we think of our faith, when we think of Christianity, we really think of a God who lives to give us everything. Like he exists for us rather than us existing for him. Like he exists to serve us rather than us living to serve him or existing to serve him existing in worship of him don't you know that human beings it's built into literally every human beings to be a worshiper every single person whether you're a christian or you're not watching this video you worship something and you may be like what do you mean i worship something you worship whatever you give most of your time to that's worship worship is whatever you live for some people worship netflix so people worship their phone. And no, it does not mean bowing down and saying, I worship you. It just means what do you devote yourself to? That's what worship really means. What do you devote yourself to? What do you devote your life to? Now, a lot of us who claim to devote our lives to Christ, we're really only devoting our lives to ourselves and to our own desires and hoping that God can assist us in, in meeting all of those desires. Do you understand? Like many people think that, God, it's God's will to give them a nice car and a nice house and godly husband and a godly wife and all of this stuff and all this stuff. And it's like, yes, God has good intentions for you, but who said that his good plan is the same as your good plan for yourself? Have you ever thought about it like this? Maybe God's will is not that you would be successful by standards of this world. Or, ha or be rich, or have a big nice house, or a big nice car, you know that might not be God's will for you. You know that, right? And some of y'all, after you heard that, you're gonna say, God forbid, why would you say that? Why are you speaking negative things? I'm not speaking negative things, I'm speaking the truth. I don't know where we got this basis from, that God's will for everybody's life is for them to live this top class A1 thing. When we see the New Testament, we see what the apostles lived like in the New Testament. We see what Paul lived like, what Peter lived like. These people sometimes did not have food to eat. Paul says to the Corinthians, he didn't even accept financial contributions for, from them. Everything that he did was with his own hands. He said that whenever he ate, he worked with his own hands. He didn't even accept money from the church he was serving. So what makes you think that being rich should be at the forefront of your mind? I feel like a lot of us, we serve God with lip service rather than with heart service. Because you know what heart service to God is? It means God saying, God, you are enough. It means saying, God, if I lost every single thing today, you are still enough. You know, that's what a selfless 
faith is. A faith where it's not about what you can get, but who you are getting. It's not about what God can give you, but who he is giving you. You know that Jesus Christ is enough. You know that if after you came to this faith, the only thing you gained was Jesus Christ and your life did not change in any way other than the fact that you got filled with love and joy and peace, which are inevitable in Christ, but you didn't get more money, you didn't get the car you wanted, you didn't get a job promotion. You know, Jesus Christ is far more enough. He's more than enough. You know, God's good plan for your life is not the same as your idea of a good plan. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. God's good plan for Jesus Christ's life was for him to not have any place to rest his head, as we see in Luke 9, 58. It was for him to be crucified on a cross and have nails driven into his skin. That was God's good plan for Jesus Christ's life. God's good plan for Stephen's life was for him to be stoned to death. God's good plan for Paul's life was for him to be shipwrecked, beaten. God's good life for Peter's life was for him to be crucified upside down. God's good plan for your life might not be what you expect and yet it's still good and yet it's still better than whatever plan you have for your life. God calls us to a selfless faith, a faith where we die to ourselves. Jesus says in Luke 9, 23, that you need to deny yourself, take up your cross daily and follow him. Do you know what it means to take up your cross daily? Do you know how heavy a cross is and how inconvenient it, it feels at the time? Take up your cross daily means forget your own desires. Forget your plan for your life and trust in God's. Do you think it was easy for Jesus to carry the cross? No, it wasn't. Do you think he had some supernatural strength? Not while he was in that human body. He felt the same pain any of us would feel while carrying that cross. And in addition, he felt the pain of all of our sins. Me, I know the pain of my own sins, but for the sins of the whole world to be on one person. Jesus' Jesus's life was not convenient. He humbled himself. He humbled himself, guys. So what makes us think that it's any different for us? When we are called to be like Christ. When 1 John 4, 17 says, in this world we are like him. So what makes you think that God wants you to live selfishly, thinking all about yourself, what you can gain, even though we're meant to be following the selfless example of Christ. Christ who washed his own disciples' feet. Christ who said in Matthew 23, 11, that the greatest among you shall be your servant. That's Christ. Christ that did not consider himself above other people, but considered others above himself. When he wanted rest, crowds would come for him. Crowds would come to him and most of us would feel annoyed about that. But no, Christ felt compassion towards those people. That's selfless living. Selfless living is as Philippians 2 says in like three to four that we need to consider others above ourselves god's good plan for your life is not just good for you it's good for everybody around you you do you understand that god's good plan for jesus life did not appear good in the eyes of the world a good plan in the eyes of the world is god wants you to be rich money car fame this that no god's good plan for jesus life was for him to die but guess what? Throughout his life, he still felt joy and love and peace. Even though he did not have the most glamorous of lives, he still felt all of these amazing things. Why? Because he was in union with the Father. And deep it yet, God's good plan for Jesus' life, yet it might not have been as convenient and glamorous for him while he was on earth, but see the billions billions of lives impacted by God's good plan for his life. God's good plan for Paul's life was not, Paul did not have a glamorous life, but see the billions of lives that are affected because of the way he preached the gospel and the way he served God. God's good plan for your life may not be what you think. It may not be glamorous, but it's still great. And it's still better than anything that you could think for yourself. Drop your own desires, deny yourself, Die to your desires and yield to whatever God has for you. Yield to the fact that if God said to you today, if he spoke to you today, even in a dream, even in a, in a vision, in your heart, and he said, 
you will not get anything else in this life after this point but me and you we need to get to the point where we say thank you god because that's more than enough that's all i ever need i don't need anything else i need you and you alone you alone suffice that's the point we're meant to get at the point where we realize just how much of a privilege it is to know this God. The God whom the sun in all its brilliant trembles before. That demons tremble before. That the oceans, the oceans, every particle of water lives in worship of him. That when Jesus, when Jesus would walk on the sea, when Jesus would walk on water, every particle of water worshipped him by lifting him up. Not letting there to be even a split Second, where he could have drowned. Why? Because they lived in worship of this God. They lived in reverence of him. And that's how we are called to live. We are called to live with that same reverence. We are called to live with that same zeal for him. With that same recognition that he is enough. All of creation. Every single bit of creation lives in worship of him. So what makes us different? What makes us any different? The gospel of Jesus Christ is not about you. It's not about what you can get. It's about everybody. It's about, yes, he died for you and yes, he loves you. But the gospel of Jesus Christ, the, the prize in the gospel is not the gift. It's him. The greatest gift that God could ever give us himself. And that's what he gave. God wanted to give you the greatest gift he could out of love for you. And so he gave you himself. Do you know how beautiful that is? Do you know God is literally the most selfless, beautiful person ever? And I'm, I am just so privileged to be his servant. I'm so privileged that I get to serve that God, the God who cares so much for other people, even within God, even the, within the God him, Godhead himself. They're always pointing to each other. God is always looking to glorify Jesus. Jesus is looking to glorify God. Holy Spirit looking to glorify Jesus, to glorify God. Everybody, they're always pointing to somebody else because they are genuinely humble. And we are called to that same humility. So look, God loves you and he wants you to live selflessly for him. And I'm telling you that you will experience the most joy when you don't, you no longer think about only yourself but you think about him and consequently you think about everybody else. Because when you're serving God, you're not just serving him, you're serving everybody. Why? Because of God, God cares for everybody and that's what he wants. He wants everybody to serve each other. What a great God, right? What a great God. The gospel of Jesus Christ is not just knowing God and giving your life to him so you can go to heaven. The gospel of Jesus Christ is knowing God and giving your life to him so you can know him. That's eternal life. That's John 17, 3. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. That's eternal life. It's not about going to heaven or running away from hell. It's about knowing him. It's about knowing the greatest person ever. It's about receiving the greatest gift ever to know him. How beautiful is that? that we get to know him. I pray today that you, that God will just open your heart to, to really love him and realize that he is enough and he alone satisfies. So yeah, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I just like to pray with you guys shortly in Jesus name. Amen. God, I want to thank you for every single person who's clicked on this video. Thank you because I know that you made them watch it for a reason. Lord God, I pray that you will speak to everyone in their hearts and arrest their hearts, that they will they will be forced to think about what you've said today, Lord God. I pray you will move, Holy Spirit, in each heart and you will change people. I pray those who are not saved, Lord, that you will bring them into a deeper knowledge and a deeper thirst for you, God. I pray that you will bring peace into everybody's life, Lord God, and when they find you. I pray people will stop thinking about themselves, but think about you pray, Lord God, that you will make us like your son. Conform us to the image of Christ, that we may really, truly walk in the purpose that you have for us and who we have been created to be. We give you all the glory, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name. So yeah, guys, uh, it's my first video. 
I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope that you enjoy more to come. I really appreciate you taking your time to watch this. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment, share, do all of that snazzy stuff. Also follow my socials, they'll be in the description box below. So yeah guys, I hope you all have a beautiful day.